Hi guys and welcome back. Today I will give you some amazing altcoins that are about to run insanely high and we're going to take advantage of that because I see them before they're actually running. And of course we were also right with yesterday's video. We nailed it here once again with my predictions that I said yesterday that was the bottom. And as you can see we pumped here really really nice back to the upside but there are still some warning signs that i want to show you and to point out so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel like this video and also activate the bell so that you will be always informed when i put out these really really valuable videos and now let's get directly into today's content here with bitcoin so first of all i just want to show you here quick on the daily again the correction that we had here was about 18.14 percent and that like i said yesterday was for me enough of a correction and lo and behold i was right we got a six thousand dollar candle back to the upside and we haven't seen a candle like this i think it, the last time was 2021 when we got a six thousand dollar candle but this is to date, the biggest candle in dollar value for Bitcoin, which just shows how much the bulls were stepping in there after the FOMC meeting, because the FOMC meeting was quite uh, dovish and uh, Jerome Powell uh, did not really say anything unexpected, uh, which drove the markets uh, back up. Now, when we go into the shorter time frames, you see here, I had here my DCA zones, and as you can also see, they were perfect entries. Uh, to DCA into Bitcoin. Now the stochastic RSI here on the one hourly is coming again to the bottom in oversold conditions. The RSI is going sideways. MACD is looking not all too bearish. So this can flip in the next 30 minutes again where we see fading um, selling pressure on the MACD with a lighter red candle followed by a small move in the Bitcoin price most likely back into this resistance here of $68,675. If we get this move, it would also complete here another inverse head and shoulders pattern that I actually just saw now. And if that would be playing out, then most, yeah, here at 68,126, let, let it be 20, is more or less the neckline. So, and that gives us a target of roughly $75,000 if that inverse head and shoulders pattern would be playing out here. So, watch. Over the next couple hours, what's happening here with Bitcoin? So we still have a little bit more, less than half of the day here left. This can happen today. What I don't want to see is that the Bitcoin price just goes sideways, something like this here, really, really long, and then tries to go up here. So this should be happening until this moment here, which is in 10 hours, roughly, nine and a half hours. So within... The next nine and a half hours, I want to see Bitcoin breaking here this level to the upside to confirm this inverse head and shoulders. If we don't get the confirmation, then at least I want to see here some sideways action and later break to the upside. What I don't want to see is here sideways action, dipping back here to retest this, come back up, go lower, and then we are trapped here in this range. So that is something that I don't want to see. But... Anyway, for now, it doesn't look like it. Uh, Bitcoin also tries right now to move you higher again. If you break here this downward sloping trend line, which is basically at the price where we are sitting at right now, uh, then most likely we are going to get here this push to $68,300 uh, and potentially from there even higher. And remember, that would also then coincide with a break of the neckline here of the inverse head and shoulders. And I'm going to play this. So I I'm, I have nothing, nothing to do today besides sitting here at the computer and at the charts, and I will play this. If I see a Bitcoin moving here to the upside and breaking the neckline, I will be playing this. I will post it in the Telegram channel and also in Discord, so keep your eyes peeled for that. The resistance remains still the same, $71,500 to $73,000. If we overcome that, we will go into a new all-time high. So the only thing that stands in our way here right now, and which is important to reclaim here on the higher time frames here, especially on the four hourly, is the prior all-time high. So we have to come up and break $69,200 to confirm basically that down here, that was actually the um, local bottom. 
and that we are reclaim and by reclaiming the prior all-time high we would confirm that the uptrend will continue and that we will also go into a new all-time high so that is something that i'm closely watching today especially while we are running here into this resistance block of 67400 to 68360 dollars approximately so i definitely want to see bitcoin um getting through this and that would be also above the daily open so here $67,850 is a really important level to reclaim here we need to be above the daily open I don't want to see us ranging here too much between daily open and Monday low because that opens up the risk that we actually fall under the Monday low and like I said earlier coming back down here into like 65 64 uh, I just don't want to see that. When it comes to EMA ribbon, we are not looking all too bad. We are above the ribbon. Uh, here, I just want to... That we are kind of holding the price action where it is right now. So that the EMA ribbon can flip again. So this will still take at least until Saturday, in my opinion. Until we're going to see the flip. Unless Bitcoin makes another God candle to the upside. Uh, like a $4,000, $6,000 candle today. Um then it might flip already tomorrow. But otherwise, it will take until Saturday at least to flip the ribbon back into an uptrend. But this is absolutely fine. So I'm I'm not really concerned about this. So I would get concerned, if, like I said, if we lose the Monday low, then most likely we are continuing this downwards trend of the EMA ribbon and need to get ready to retest um, here this short-term support level and create a higher low higher than this one here at $60,700. So if the next one would be around $62,400, I can live with that uh, and from there go back up. So watch here the EMA ribbon. As long as the price action stays above it or above the Monday low, we are good to continue to go to the upside, lose the Monday low, and most likely we are retesting here some of the lower levels um, of around $60,000. Then the funding rates. The funding rates, they are still completely reset, which is also, again, another indication for me that the leverage is completely gone uh, out of the market here. I can go here to like 50, you know, so then, okay, we get some orange again, um, but not crazy, you know. So before, the slider was like here, you know, at uh, 180, and here was everything, you see it here, you know, everything orange, you know, so we are like three times lower in terms of leverage in the market then we were at the highest. So that's, um, I'm not, it's actually a good sign, you know? So it means people that were leveraged got liquidated or they closed their position. So the leverage is gone. And it opens up again, the opportunity for us to take advantage of that and taking new positions here until we see again here, like crazy orange happening, you know? So, and I'm already, full disclosure, I'm already allocated in some coins and I'm going to show you uh, which coins these actually are and i just see some of them actually starting to make a profit so you should hurry up to buy them before it's too late so i have to make a little bit faster here yeah so let's finish up with bitcoin so here on the liquidation heat uh, so here on the liquidation levels again a lot of shorts still above us we have cleaned a lot of the longs so i don't believe that we are coming back to test fifty nine thousand dollars and break below to take out everything that's down here direction is to the upside like i said here on this four hourly chart, uh, we could complete here an inverse head and shoulders. If we do something like this here and then break up, then also here we have the inverse head and shoulders on the four hourly chart. The target remains the same. And here I just want to see a, a range break of uh, $67,600, a potential short squeeze starting from 68800 When we are going to the liquidation heat map and I go here to, again, the weekly chart, we can see here also tap 68500 $455, there's $416 million worth of short liquidations, tap that, we get a short uh, cascade, a short squeeze all the way up to like $70,000 in my opinion. So that will be really, really quick. We just need to tap this. If Bitcoin can manage to do this today, um, yeah, then blue skies ahead for us and that will of course also reflect in some of the altcoins. And guys, before we move to the altcoins that I am trading right now and I'm also looking at to add more, um, go to Bybit if you don't have an exchange yet where you can trade and use the link here down below. You still get $30,000 if you use the link or on Margex. On Margex, I will open a new strategy exactly only for these coins. It will be called, um, I think I will just call it AM Crypto Altcoins. 
Uh, so look out for that. If you cannot use a Bybit, then go to BitGet or to Femex. They are both equally good, in my opinion, but I would only use them if in your country, for for whatever reason, you cannot use Bybit. And if you just want traditional copy trading, go to Fairdesk. $120,000 is still the highest bonus in the industry. The links are for all these platforms in the description below and in the pin comment below. And you actually support this channel and the content that I produce uh, with it uh, by using these links. So I would appreciate if you use them. Now, the Bitcoin dominance is dropping here as expected, even after that pump here to the upside yesterday. You, you see, we not, we're not even coming close to the prior highs here on the dominance. As I also said this times and times again, also this downward sloping trend line uh, is acting as re resistance for the dominance, uh, which is a good sign because the more we get rejected from there, uh, the higher... Yeah, the higher the likelihood that we're going to see here a massive red candle to the downside. I just don't want a big red cascade, something like this, where altcoins just basically going to the moon straight away. Again, we want to have a slow move and sustainable move to the downside. So something that we are seeing right now is absolutely fine. Um, I just would like to see tomorrow another red candle to the downside breaking here under this downward sloping trend line. And then maybe again some sideways action and then again another leg to the downside. When we're going then to the liquidation, uh, sorry, to the for our RSI heat map. So we see here one of the coins that piqued this morning my interest was ZRX. Uh, in my $1,000 to $10,000 uh, trading challenge on um, BitGet right now in my Discord, we were actually trading that. Um, and got stopped out, so which is fine. So, But why did it pique my interest? Because look here how low we actually are here on the 24 hours. So here the second row. Uh, can I get over this? No, I cannot. Here, t minus 24.12% on the day. What happened? And then I analyzed it and I understood, okay, there, are, there were some whales actually selling for some reason. I don't know why they uh, dumped their CRX position. But this gives us right now an amazing opportunity to pick up a quality project. And this is one of the coins that I'm going to talk about today. Here I have two scenarios lined out, laid out, sorry, laid out, uh, here on the one hourly chart. Here the green area is the support area that we came into right now. And here the JP is the golden pocket, the golden ratio of the Fibonacci extension level. Uh, we came really close to it, but did not tap it. Um, but we are holding the support and moving back to the upside right now. So full disclosure, I'm already in a position since 90 cents. It's not too late for you to get into this because this will move today. Today, guys. Today, in the next 24 hours, really quick back to over a dollar. Because all this year was one big player. And every time when something happens like this, the market is bouncing really, really quick back to the upside. So this is really time sensitive to take advantage of that. And I tell you, across all my accounts, I'm trading this right now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm leveraged, I have spot, I have everything on this coin right now. Because you, uh, you don't get in a bull market a lot of opportunities where a quality project like that is coming down 25%. And that's why I took advantage of that and I'm... I can only suggest you to do the same, you know, so because this will come back really, really quick, at least through retest this resistance area of $1.10. And, and you also see here stochastic RSI wants to pinch to the upside. Uh, the selling pressure is fading out on the MACD. And also the RSI is pointing to the upside here. Another coin that I'm watching today is a near protocol. Also here we are oversold here on the stochastic RSI. MACD, I think also the next candle will be a lighter red one. RSI kind of going sideways down, but might be also turn around he, uh, turning around here soon. The only thing that you need to watch here for near, for this downward sloping trend line to be broken, which is sitting now at $6.70 more or less. And you see here, we got three strong rejections from that. Once that level is broken, there you want to enter. There is another support level underlying support level that I just spotted or you want along from here from $6.27 to $6.34 if we are losing here this support area that we are trade, trading in and sitting on right now so one of the two um, is where you want to long this from and I will keep this position at least back to this high here of $8.60 
So this is my target for it. $8.59. Okay. Another one that I'm looking at is Solana. Solana also here under resistance right now, but also Stochastic wants to pinch to the upside. MACD looks also not all so bad. Again, Stochastic going sideways down, but also any moment ready to turn around. And here again, same scenario. And here we are actually bull flagging a little bit. So if you want to trade this bull flag, then we get a target of $223 which would be a new yearly high. Um, and from there, it's not far away anymore to the all-time high. So I guess we would really, really quick also into um, an all-time high here for Solana at, at that moment, especially with the MACD. Uh, sorry, the stochastic errors are giving a buy signal. Let's see how hours, four hours looking. Okay, okay. So we might get a small rally here, close to $200, then a small correction before we then actually go higher, which is, which is fine, you know, so I can also live with that. Um, that's how it looks to me here right now. 12 hour looks good. Yeah, so I, I think in the next 48 hours, Solana will be trading again over $200. So also here, if you're looking for an entry, wait here for that break of $190, and then you can trade this at least to 202, and then afterwards $260 new all-time high. Another one that I'm looking at is DYDX. Also here, nice downward sloping trend line uh, here on the four hourly chart that we are testing right now. If we can break above that, uh, that would be a long signal for me. I'm, again, full disclosure, I'm already in a position uh, since $3.60 from before the drop. Uh, so I basically have to wait that we are reclaiming. Uh, but also here, I believe that we're going back to at least $4.50 once we are breaking this downward sloping trend line. So here my entry, if I would not have a position already, would be at $3.50 more or less. And then the target would be $4.50 to the upside here because also on the higher time frames, see here we are at the bottom. Okay, we are pinching to the upside here on the 12 hour, but on the hour, on the daily. Yeah, so here on the daily, you see selling pressure fading out, RSI going up, uh, stochastic going up. So which is telling me that we are getting at least a move here back to like $4 for uh, DYDX. TIA is another one that I'm watching. Also, we are here under resistance right now, but uh, while we are going sideways, the indicator is cooling down, which is a really, really good sign of strength here for a coin like this. And as long as we are holding this upward sloping trend line, TIA will continue to go here to the upside. So, and here, my first... and initial target is the downward sloping trend line here sitting at $17.31 more or less. I just want to have a look here on the four hourly time frame how we are looking there. Okay, they, there we look overcooked. So we could basically get a move into this resistance area here to like $15.50 something like this. Then come back to the bottom of that resistance area under $15. Start ranging here and then pop to the upside unless the higher time frames are also completely bottomed out. No, 12 hourly. Yeah, let's let's say next three days, I would expect a move to like $17, but with some chop. But still, it's a good coin. It's really strong. It was strong in the last couple of days um, while Bitcoin was going down. So here you just want to wait for a break about $15 to long this with a one hourly close. Only then I would enter this not before or a retest of this upward sloping trend line to like $14.50. Uh, lose $14 and uh, I would close that trade. Um, that, that would be my stop loss. Let's quick talk about Ethereum. Sorry, I have to look here a little bit to ZRX because it's it's pumping, you know, it's uh, four, it's 2% two uh, 2 up since I spoke about it. Uh, so Ethereum also, really, really important level to reclaim here is uh, $3,576. Um, I think it was that level. Yes, once we are reclaiming that, we are back in the range to $3,785 more or less. I guess Ethereum will stay here a little bit in that range before we see another pop to the upside. And you have to understand Ethereum is lagging behind Bitcoin right now. So, which is a good sign. The last time Bitcoin was at 68,000, Ethereum was almost $4,000. So that is really, really good for us. If Ethereum is lagging now behind, it, may, it means Ethereum will still get this massive pop to the upside as long as Bitcoin goes sideways or continues to go higher. So that's also something that I'm waiting for. And also here, uh, I will take an, another Ethereum long position at 3,700 and um, 
$3,572, that's what I wanted to say, uh, with a one hourly close, uh, no, sorry, with a 15 or 30 minute close above that level. So why is here this level so important to the upside here, $3,600? Because here on the 12 hourly chart, that is the top of the EMA ribbon. So I want to see price action to be above that to get confirmation that we are res resuming and continuing this uptrend here and actually going to move here into this bigger resistance of $3,900, $4,000 um, and potentially even higher than that. And I just want to remind you when Bitcoin in the past, uh, sorry, Ethereum in the past was at the $3,900, $4,000 level, we had the same struggle before we broke $4,000 the last time that we were here three years ago. So keep that in mind. It is, for some weird reason, an important level for Ethereum to basically hold resistance there. So, but once we are through that, it's basically blue skies. You know, we only need to close a 12 hourly and a daily candle above uh, $4,000. And you're gonna see Ethereum snapping really quick, another 10, 20% to the upside guys that's it already for today's episode i hope you enjoyed it and that you are about to make a lot of money here on zx because we are up now four percent since i spoke about it so go quick and take advantage i would buy this up to 98 cents so just that you know if the video comes out and we are around 98 cents i would still buy it even at the dollar i would still buy it stop buying at the dollar and two Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you smash up the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and you'll see you then again with more cash in your pocket tomorrow.